everyone and welcome to my channel my name is Adora and if you are seeing this face for the first time thank you very much for stopping by and I hope that before you get to the end of this video you will have a reason to subscribe and if you're an old subscriber thank you very very much for watching my videos thank you very much for supporting me for encouraging me thank you very much I really I really really do appreciate okay so um recently I have just been having some kind of flashback and I have just been um, trying to put things together and you know, just to see how far I have come in the UK. I just re 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 realized recently that wow, so I've actually spent this number of years in the UK, like just like yesterday. I can remember when I came. I can remember when I came to the UK and just me thinking about it and looking back, it's like wow, that was just like yesterday. And you know, how time flies, it's already, is already gone past in a very 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 short time but you know that's life so I was just trying to like um, sit back and just kind of put some checks and balances together and see what have I gone through so far what have I learned what have I learned from this whole thing from this experience living in a country that was once a strange country to me but is now home to me what have I learned so far from living in the UK? What has life taught me? What experiences would I say I have achieved that I can, um, if possible, impact my little knowledge to others? What would I say I like or I don't like about my experiences in the UK? But so far, it's been more of the positives, honestly. I really cannot think of anything I would um, hold on to and say, no, this is one thing I hate about the UK. I'm not, not saying it doesn't have its own negative sides, like everywhere, everywhere in the world has one or two things about them that you will definitely may not like about it. But so far, so good. But today, in this video, I just want to tell a little story about what I have experienced so far, how life has changed so far. In fact, the six lessons that I have learned living in the UK. Number one, hmm, I now value money more. Like I put more respect to the word money. I put a lot of value to that word money. When I was in Nigeria, I remember many years back when I was still in Nigeria, especially when I was in school, you know, when you're in school in the university and um, you usually have this kind of pity from friends and family. They are like, oh, she's still in school. She doesn't have a job. She's not doing much. Let's support her. And then you call this uncle or that auntie or this cousin or that friend, you know, I need money or you should send me money and they will be like, okay, send your bank account and things like that. You always have one or two people that are there to support you financially like you can never really be broke for a long time there's always somebody that will come to your rescue when you need money like that so that was the kind of a situation i found myself at that time and then secondly i was also doing my own little side hustle i was into modeling i was modeling so i was getting paid from it it's that so at that time it was not like it was so much of a big um um thing then for me it was not like i was being paid in millions but at least i was paid something reasonable to assist me live a comfortable life as a student as a university student which was very very good for me but you know what in all of this money i was making and then the ones i was getting from friends and family i was not smart enough to invest like it never really occurred to me to you know, so it never really occurred to me to invest my money on something reasonable, like, you know, to maybe kind of trade it, do one or two businesses and make more money out of it. It was just more of spending, spending, spending. And you know, because you're in university that time, you were in the midst of your friends, you were in the campus, you always see one or two things that was in vogue then. And, and due to the youthful exuberance, you want to just spend, you just want to spend money. You just want to do things because other people are doing it. Okay, there's the latest jeans in town. You want to buy it because other people are buying it. There's the latest dress in town. Okay, let's and because the money is there, let's spend it. So I was not wise enough to know that you can also take some part of this money, trade, even if you have to buy something and sell it and make some money and all that. 
all of that idea was like alien to me because number one i was very young and number two i was not wise number three i didn't attach value to it why because most of the money came from you know free you know when something is free you don't really value it uh, friends are dashing you money family is giving you money so the way it comes is just the way you spend it because you just feel like ah oh, even if i call them next time they're gonna still send money to me so i never really put so much value in it because i did not really work for it apart from the one that was coming from the modeling which was also like a hobby that modeling too was not really like so much work it was not like I, I didn't feel I was even working. I, to me then, modeling to me was like, you are being paid to have fun. So it was not really, really, really working per se. So to me, I just felt it was not hard work. So whatever money that's coming from it was still a woof, was still like free money. So I didn't, I didn't have the sense to save, to put one or two things out for the future, you know, some things like that. But coming to the UK was a different ball game entirely. Here, there is really nothing like, oh, I have an auntie or an uncle that I can always call that will see me through or that will rescue me when I'm broke or, you know, things like that. There is really no one to assist you financially. Everybody is busy looking for money. Even if you have a family around, they are also trying to pay or sort out one bill or the other. Like the bill here, the expenses and everything is choking everybody. So nobody is actually going to save money because they want to save it to give to you. In the first place, yes, you might have one or two people that you can actually run to once in a while. But like, how long are they going to keep giving you money? You know, like how long are you going to keep going to them to tell them, please, I need some money. Give me some money to pay my rent or give me some money to pay my my um, one or two bills. So I need, you know, it's it's just the way it's, it's difficult for you to get the money. It's the same way it's difficult for them to get the money. The same kind of job you are doing, so you're stressing yourself to get money. They might even be going through something more difficult than that to get money. So here it's, you. it, it just made me to understand that if you put in the, your strength, the energy, the time and effort and everything to work and you are being paid, that money, you will value it. In short, it's like gold. You will remember what you have gone through, the process you went through to make the money. You will enjoy it. You will value it. You will put more respect to that word money. So that was one of the reasons... Um, that was one of the things, the lessons actually I learned when I came here. I decided that, wow, I am what I took for granted in the past. I was going to fix it and which was putting more value to money. Because in the first place, like now, it's made me to understand more that, yeah, even if I have make money from work, from the, my regular job, I invest it in my side hustle. I invest it in the business. I just kind of grew mature overnight. I just kind of um, developed business ideas overnight. So I'm always thinking, I'm always cracking my brain, like what can I do? What kind of business can I invest in? What kind of business can I put in this amount of, amount of pounds and I multiply it or I double it or I triple it? No, things like that, which was not there before in the past. Because right now, it's like every man to his own. Everybody's carrying their cross. So you should always be thinking like two steps ahead of where you are. Always be thinking of how to make money. Always be thinking of how to double whatever you have. That was one of the major lessons I learned since I came to And then the, the next one is that ever since I came to the UK, um, I have been a stronger person. Now, before now, when I was back in Nigeria, when I was younger, like when I was much younger, like when I was in my 20s, like um at a point my mother used to think that ah, are you sure you'll be able to survive without me like she used to ask me are you sure you can survive without me like if i'm not there will you be able to do certain things you know because then i was too fragile i, I you know i even me then i didn't believe i would be able to live outside of you know my family in the first place i've never really stayed away from my family for such a long time I am the only time I stayed away from my family, my, like my immediate family, was when I was in a secondary school and because I was in the boarding house. I was in a boarding house then. And um, even this boarding house, when we are on mid-term break, we usually go to my auntie, because my auntie was living in the same city where my boarding house was. So I usually go to her house for the mid-term break. So she's still family. 
So when we are on long holidays, I go back to Lagos where I was based to stay with my you know my immediate family. So I've never really stayed far away from them. Then when I finished secondary school and I was trying to get my um, university admission. I was making sure I didn't leave Lagos. Like I was always making sure that whenever I have to write jam or whatever, it must be Lagos. Just because I had this fear of um, of surviving without my family, I always felt like no, I can't go far from them. You know, like I was just too used to them. I always wanted a, a reason to come back home. I always wanted a reason or um, an excuse to be around my family because we all grew that close. We're very, very, we're very, very tight and closed family unit like that so we've never really we've never really um gone away from each other for a long time so she used to ask me then are you sure you'll be able because i was just too fragile number one and i think i was also a bit lazy because um i always had things done easily for me you know like when i just my mother will say okay like sometimes when she's cooking in the kitchen and she says come and cook with me come and learn come and watch i will just give one excuse or the other for not wanting to be there and it was just the way i was i was just fragile in nature so she was always asking me are you sure you can cook are you sure you can cook with me fast forward till now i am in the uk without my family without my mom and all that i remember when i came to the uk <laughs> I remember when I came to the UK, I actually came to the UK vulnerable. Like when I mean vulnerable, I, I was I was pregnant and then I came. So pregnant in the UK for the first time in like in a strange land. And before now, I've always been coming to the UK, but that was on visit. I just come and visit and go back home. But this time around, I actually came to stay. So the whole process, you know, you know, when you're not in the system, it's different from when you're coming on a visit to a particular place. It is different from when you're actually re relocating to live there, to stay there. Then you begin to see that, wow, there are a lot of things that are, that, that are going on on the ground that you never knew as a visitor because you only just come and go. So when I came, I was like, oh my God, I was, it was a really, really trying period for me because my mother was not here. My family, my family was not, um, was not around. I, um, I had to, you know how it is in the UK when it is, you don't have that family support around you when, especially when you're having kids. It's just, so it was just really, really difficult for me because from right from time, I used to say that um, whenever I want to have my baby, at least my mother will be there for my omogwo and all that. But in a situation where we found ourselves so many years later, it was not as easy as we wanted or I wanted it. So here I was in the UK having my baby without my mom, without my family to come and be visiting me. You know, I had this picture in my mind. Yeah, my family would be around me. Maybe in the morning, my mother will cook for me. She will bet the child. And in the afternoon, this auntie will bring food for me. In the night, another auntie will pound yam for me. I, I just had this picture in my mind that my whole family will surround me through at least for the one month after I put my had my baby. But I came to the UK and it was just... It was not the way I expected it. But then, what would you do? In a situation like this, you just have to adjust. Just, I just had to grow up. I just had to mature overnight to do things that I never thought I could do. I had, I just time around, I'm, I was, I'm a mom. You know, I was, it was, this was a big change from um, being a single, small, young girl back then that had things done easily and um, that was so fragile to now being a mom. So I had to sit myself down and tell myself, that, listen, enough of that fragile, 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 like a butter, whatever. You have to grow up now. Now the table has turned. You are now an adult, you are now a mother, and you should be able to live up to your child's expectation now. So, you know, it's made me stronger. And then secondly, um, a lot of experiences I have passed through here in the uk um because what well, is one thing i understand about living here if, i don't know i mean it's yeah it could be the same thing living any elsewhere every other part of the country but like uk because i live here one thing i've understood here is that it prepares you it's the uk kind of makes you to be responsible it prepares you in so many ways to accept or rather take up your responsibility 
you know like when i came before now i never used to pay any bills or anything in my life you know that was because i've always lived with my family so i didn't know what it was to pay rent to pay maybe water bill to pay um i didn't know i never paid anything but here it's kind of um, made me to be stronger in my budgets um the way I budget money for things, okay, first I have to bring up money for this, I have to pay for this, I have to be responsible for this, I have to do this, I have to do that, and you have to do this on your own. So yeah, it, it made me stronger. I, I grew more mature emotionally. I grew stronger physically in the lot of things I never knew I could do as a woman before I started doing it because here you just have to be a bit independent they, here they, nobody is actually having your back like that you know if you have a family if for example now you're married and you and your husband you're living together you're doing things yes then two of you fine you can actually move it on you can do things you can strengthen your bond it makes life easier but if you're if you're alone and there's not much uh, even if you just have friends around you sometimes those friends want to do their own thing and you really you really don't want to be bothering people to come and be carrying your cross when everybody's actually busy so yes i became a bit um, stronger when i came to the uk and then the next one um hmm, uk will humble you eh? like the uk will actually level you if you think you are up there you will come down by force because when i came okay like i remember those days back then you know um the kind of lifestyle the kind of things we used to see back there people feeling too big people little incidents will happen on the road and you are hearing questions like do you know who i am or do you know who you are talking to you know things like that i came to the uk i never saw all those kind of um attitude from people you know i just discovered that a lot of people were all acting on the same page we're all acting on the same level like irrespective of where you're coming from irrespective of who you are wherever you you are coming from when you get to the uk you learn to behave yourself you learn to respect yourself you will learn to you learn to put down your shoulders a little bit because that is what it is you you you, you will be humbled by force it's not like there's a manual that teaches people to be humble or it's not like there's a certain way that the uk has told people that when you come to the uk well, this is what we'll do to bring you down as humble you know it's just there system systematically it's there secretly it's kind of hidden this it's like there's just this way of life that makes you behave yourself that makes you behave yourself because sometimes we you know we humans we, we are just too um full of arrogance and pride and we feel too big like we, we just feel like it's just about the world revolves around us there's nobody else existing apart from us but coming to a place like this i just felt like wow this is a place where nobody sees anybody as far as i'm concerned everybody's of this is off the same pedestal everybody is on the same level everybody is just equal whatever it is mr a is doing to achieve certain heights to achieve certain goals Mr. B can as well do the same thing. It all depends on the effort you are putting. It depends on um, the amount of um, hard work you intend to put into it. It depends on... Um, it just depends on what exactly you are expecting of yourself. It depends on what you think you can contribute to get that same thing Mr. A has. If you, as long as you can do it, you can get it. You know, because I remember, because I, some yeah, some months back, I was discussing with a friend of mine. She just came into the UK um, two years ago, and she was telling me that wow, that when she was in Nigeria, ah, she used to you know, look down on people because she 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 had a managerial position in the bank, so anybody that was working there in the teller, you know, the fronts those ones actually give you the cash out the money or whatever I give you the money they're the tellers they call them she used to look down at them like those ones were her juniors and all that but coming to the UK she actually discovered that to work in the bank you don't even need a university degree 
you do not need a university degree. That that was what humbled her because back then she used to flaunt her master's degree certificate and all that. And she anybody anybody that doesn't have a master's then certificate to her was like mm -mm, we're not of the same class. I actually had my master's in this, 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 and this, and I'm one of the my uh, managers of so and so and so bad. So she she used to brag a lot about it. But on getting there, she told me that ah, Adora, can you imagine? I just discovered that in the bank here, you actually do not need a university degree to work in the bank. And this is what I have been feeling with back home. And I said, yeah, that, well, that's UK for you. It will bring you to the point where you will know that this life, eh, there is nothing in this life. That's UK for you. It will just, it will just make you, it will bring you to that level where you will humble yourself. And you will just know that, stop feeling. There is nothing in this life. It's, it's just vanity upon vanity. That's it. Another word was that... Um, my spirituality was actually affected now what do i mean by this many years back when i was still back home i i used to i'm a christian i'm still a christian i've always been a christian and i don't see myself um leaving my faith for any reason but as i grow older and rather since I came to the UK, a lot has changed about my my faith, about my about my thinking, about my about the way I see or I view life. A lot has changed about the way I reason spiritually. A lot has changed about the way I see things because sometimes I just think um, I was being too over religious. I think I was being too over sensitive to things i used to um think everything that happened in life was just spiritual 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 i used to drop my common sense then and then just go with anything that has the spiritual you know connotation irrespective of what of whatever it is for instance now i could then maybe back then if, as you can see, my shadow is on the wall now. I have my shadow on the wall due to the ring light I'm using. But, you know, back then, because of my, um, what do I call this? Because of the over-religious attitude I had and which a lot of us actually have, I could just be reading meaning to even the shadow. One part of my mind may tell me that, ah, so that my shadow is shaking like this. I hope somebody is not using it against me. Or I hope somebody is not watching me from my shadow. Blood of Jesus. I repeat it in Jesus' name. You know? It was that bad that everything that happened, I had a reason to connect it to a spiritual thing. I had a reason to say one witch is doing me, or one witchcraft is doing me, or somebody from my village is doing me. You know, I always had a reason to blame somebody for whatever misfortune I was going through spiritually because that was just the way I, I i i that that was just the way i was taught to believe you know especially from many churches i attended that was the way i was forced to understand life i was forced to think that everything that is not working is not working because of some demons but when i came here i had to start using my common sense to understand that not everything is spiritual, not everything is about witchcraft, not everything is about demons, not everything is about bad people or world people or whatever it is. A lot of things that actually happen in this life, some of them too, are just man-made. Some of them are just because of what you do or what you did or what you did not do. I'm not saying that spiritual things don't happen i am not saying that of course i still believe in god i still believe in spirituality but i am not being so naive and um, gullible not to understand that common sense should prevail i'm not being so gullible not to understand that there's certain things that are not spiritual like i remember back then even me thinking that okay yes there is no light you come back home from work or wherever you go to in the morning you get back home there's no light the first thing that you just keep have you just keep um, praying against every you know, powers of darkness that keeps making them to take the light why is nepal not bringing light maybe some demons in the neighborhood that don't like electricity they so they keep tampering with the 
tampering with the electricity in the area or they keep tampering with you know the, you I, I always have the reason to blame something for not happening but here if you do not have electricity is because you did not put power in your you didn't buy your electricity you didn't buy you didn't pay for electricity if you don't have water here it's because you didn't pay for your water everything has been fixed by the system everything has been provided by the system the water has been provided by the system by the government it is left for you to pay and they keep giving you water electricity is there it is left for you to recharge your electricity card and you get light you get electricity that is because the government is living up to the expectation this is not a spiritual thing the government is working they have a working government that is why you go out on the streets you see the road everywhere clear smooth clean the floor is as smooth as anything because the government takes it upon themselves to make sure that the roads are in good condition to avoid unnecessary accidents on the road. And if it was in a place where I was coming from before, where the roads are bad and full of gallops and then potholes on the floor, where an accident occurs or happens on that road, the next thing we blame the devil for sucking blood on that road. It is That was just what we were thinking then. Not knowing that the road is bad because the government didn't fix it. The road is bad, it's faulty. You have potholes there because the government refused to do what we meant to do. If that road was good, accidents would be minimized on that road. At least if there's any accident at all on that road, it would not be because of bad roads. It could be because of maybe reckless driving or whatever it was. And then if it was because of reckless driving due to a drunk driver or whatever, here, there are a lot of places where you have drunk drivers but when you are in a society where the law and order is respected those things are reduced they are really 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 minimal so this is one of the things that we're making me to understand that everything in life is not spiritual everything in life is not spiritual if you are in a country where you go to university you study after four or five years you come out and you don't have a job not everything is spiritual here, if you go to university and you come out, you want a job, you will get a job of your choice. Here, you don't even need to go to university before you get a job. There's a job for everybody. It depends on what you want. So, how does the spirituality, how does the witches and witchcraft and everything now affect or now come into the picture when everything is working? All you need in some cases is just a good working government to fix things. And then you discover that your prayer points will reduce. Most of your prayer points will now be thanking God of what he has done, what he is doing, what he will do. And not about fire, 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 die, 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 which I was used to. So that aspect of my religion, my spirituality or my faith was actually shaped or rather reshaped when I came to the UK. And then this one, hmm, then again, I appreciate every job now. Like every job now, I appreciate it. Because back then, I used to think some certain jobs were for certain kind of people, certain class of people. And then I used to think, you know, maybe they didn't, they, they didn't, they they, 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 they they have this job because they did not they didn't go to school they don't have a degree or they have this job because they, they don't have connections they don't have the right people to give them better jobs or you know and that is because of, that is because of the kind of society we come from we always believed that there was this kind of division you know the rich have a certain kind of lifestyle that they are enjoying or they are used to and while the poor had this kind of lifestyle that they are used to because of the poverty and all that. But over here, I was surprised. The first time I saw a lady, she's a cleaner. But when I saw the car she parked outside the office, I discovered her. In the UK here, it is here I have seen people that do certain jobs we used to call menial jobs back then but here they have a very comfortable lifestyle you will see a cleaner packed packing a very beautiful big heavy car out there and you'll be wondering but i thought she's a cleaner yeah because your lifestyle your your kind of job here doesn't define you 
The job you do here in the UK doesn't define your personality. It doesn't define how much is in your account. It doesn't define, it doesn't say, it doesn't, it doesn't define you at all in any way. But back then, the kind of job one does defines them. You, you immediately open your mouth to say, oh, I am a banker, I work in a bank. People look at you or they regard you with some kind of respect or some kind of, you know, accolades or there's something about you that makes them feel, oh, okay, okay, he has a, he's living a good life. Even if your salary is peanuts, but just because you call that name, you know, they feel like, yes, okay, this person deserves my respect. He deserves honor because he or she works in the bank. Or you mention, if you mention, you say, okay, I work with the oil company, the same respect goes, oh, wow, she works in the oil company. They give you that kind of um, accolades, they, they respect you more. But when you open your mouth, say things like, oh, I'm a street cleaner, they look down at you like, mm -hmm this one okay life has just ended for this one or you say things like okay i'm a plumber i'm an electrician you know things like that there was just this kind of um this setting where we looked at people that had certain jobs but over here like i said earlier the uk is a leveler everyone is of the same level and those jobs you call menial jobs to so it will shock you to know that even those jobs we call menial small and all those things those are one of the high paying jobs in the uk those are one of the high paying jobs in the UK. If you bring someone who works in the office, who sits and types on the computer all day, and bring someone else who does a plumbing job or an electrician, in most cases, the electrician is paid more than that lady that sits in the office. Forget about the poshness, the high heels and the, you know, the suit she's gonna wear there. The electrician is paid more than the person that works in the office. So. That's like just like the way life is over here. It's not exactly as um, the way we paint the picture back then. Over here, it's like the other way. And then the last but not the least is never say never. Never say never. Now, I remember certain times I used to think like, oh my God, when I get to the UK, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do that. This is how I want my life to be. This is how I want things to turn out. Ah, it must be like this. I must. Ah. Now, I had a picture, the kind of lifestyle I wanted to live, the kind of things I wanted to do, the, even the kind of people I wanted to meet. I had this certain picture in my mind and it never happened. Yeah, it never happened because sometimes you don't dictate to life. Life dictates to you. Sometimes you you are not really in control of certain things when they when they happen or when they are about to happen. They just happen and you just have to accept it like like that. That's fate for you. So um, when I came to the UK, I used to say okay even before then before I came to the UK many years 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 back before I came to the UK I used to say when I get to the UK ah that's in less than one year I am going to. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that one. I'm going to build mansion here and there. I'm going to do this one. In it. But um, when you come to the UK, it's not as easy as that. Like, <laughs> it's not as easy as that. Too. Like, ah! In fact, one day I sat and I was just thinking, eh? All the heli hel helicopter and aeroplane I was drawing my brain back then. I'm going to buy, I'm going to ship it back home, container, five containers every month. See, yeah, hmm. not be so. It's not like that. And then I used to say things like, ah, when I get to the UK, me, you no, know, I won't do certain jobs. Oh, I will never do this kind of job. I can never do this kind of job because then I used to hear that people were doing some, you know, menial jobs, you know, like back jobs. I'll be like, no, I can't do this kind of job. No, I won't do it. So when I get to the UK, I'm going to work in this office. I'm going to be working in that office. When you come to the UK especially as a beginner like you just start in life there are certain jobs you will do you will not have a choice but to do it because you have to survive you will have no choice but to try it sometimes you're not even doing it because you necessarily need the money but because you want the experience sometimes you're doing it because maybe you've heard people talk about it so much you want to give it a try and then the good thing i like about the uk is that you are not obliged to remain in a particular place for so long. You just keep trying different things. As long as you are just comfortable experimenting with different jobs, there are jobs. There are jobs everywhere that you can try. It depends on how strong you are to actually work. I have a friend who has worked in warehouse. She's worked in the retail. She's worked in hospitality. She has done care. She has she has worked in almost she has that is she just keeps jumping every year she has a different job every year she has a new job because 
you know, it's just, and she's not doing it because she really, really, really needs the money. She just wants to try and see what it takes to work in certain places. So she just keeps going around. So never say never. If you're coming to the UK with the mindset that when I go to the UK, I will never do it in a, a, a certain thing. I will advise you just keep your mind open because you might do it. You might actually do it. It all depends on situation, maybe where you find yourself or how life actually changes it for you. So that was just me and that's how, that has been my experience so far. Um, that is how the UK has actually affected me things i sit back and i kind of um have a flashback and kind of evaluate my life again and i'm like wow so this is actually me today and that's just it anyway so those are the lessons i've actually learned coming over to the uk and as i must say as far as i'm concerned they have not been terrible lessons at all they've actually taught me to be the person I am today. They've taught me to be stronger. They've taught me to be more mature. And they have taught me that with what I have learned today, I can actually adapt anywhere I go. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.